welcome to my corner of the knitting universe. Um, my name is Maivor and I come to you from Finland, uh, from a small village outside the city of Vasa on the west coast. Uh, this YouTube channel is called Stikka Mitjärta, uh, which means uh, knit my heart um, in Swedish. And uh, I'm a Swedish speaker although I live in Finland, um, but this area where we live has a very strong Swedish uh, minority um, and um, many people here are, are uh, bilingual as well, speak both Finnish and Swedish. Um, and in addition to that, the city of Vasa is a very international city with I think almost a hundred different languages spoken in the city. Um, so in that spirit, I thought that I would make this uh, podcast in English. Also because the knitting community is largely, um, or the lingua franca of the uh, knitting community is English. So knitting terms, terminology is, is often talked about in English anyway. But we'll see how it goes. Welcome, anyway. <laughs> um, I'm sitting here. Um, in my home office, actually, in my house. Um, I live with my husband and our two sons who are 15 and 12 years old. And I mainly work from home. So this is the room uh, where I actually sit and work, not this corner, especially, but it's the most quiet place of the house. So now, um, does the knitting universe really need another knitting podcast? Not sure, <laughs> but I need it. I need to talk about knitting. Um, many, I think many knitters are not blessed with a partner or a spouse uh, who enjoys listening to uh, lots of um, discussions about sticks and color choices and the beauty of the latest merino yarn. Um, so you need to share, I need to share. And, um, uh, that's what I thought. Well, why not just throw it out there onto this, into cyberspace and see if maybe I can contribute or if I can give back to some of the people that I've been inspired by. I make no pledge whatsoever about uh, the regularity of this podcast. I uh, don't say, I, I won't say how often I'm going to make it or um, how long I'm going to make it or, you know, I'll do it as long as it's fun and I have the time and, and the inspiration to do it, just like with knitting in general. Um, yeah, okay, so what have I been knitting? Now, when you start a podcast, it's like, okay, how far back do you go and showing your finished object like for the last year or yeah, you know, um, well, I've picked out a few things to show you that are fairly recent. Um, and then I'm going to show you what I'm working on right now and maybe a little bit of, of what I'm planning, planning to do, um, this year. What am I wearing? I am wearing um, a sweater that I call the Spice Sweater. And that is because this, this uh, yarn, the colorway of this yarn is called Spice. This is a basic uh, top-down raglan um, with uh, some tucks um, at the sleeves and also at the hem. I'll just get myself up on the bed and we can see what it looks like. Um, oh, let's see. So. The tucks here and the same tucks down here. I don't know if you can see that. And some waist chafing. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't use a pattern for this one or a, a f f written or a, a ready-made 
pattern. Um, I use I made this. Oh, I just wanna. I'm gonna show you the the neckline. That these are just roll sort of rolled pieces of of stockinette that rolls over like that. Um, yeah, it's um, this this uh, description comes from the book Custom Knits by Wendy Bernard. I was gonna bring the book, but of course I forgot, so now I don't have it here to show you. Um, but it, it's oh, about 10, 15 years old now, the book. Um, but it, it has descriptions of how you customize your own sweater, either from a, uh, a finished or from uh, a pattern that you have, or from scratch, just making up your own pattern. And it, it's an excellent book if you wanna learn um, to customize your uh, nets for your body. Um, and this was a bit of a, a learning curve. I, I used this knit to, to kind of experiment a little bit and, and trying to just start from from her basic instructions and, and build from there and just uh, fiddle a bit a little bit little bit with with the waist shaping and so on and I actually re-knit the body I, I ripped it quite a, a big section here because I decided I wanted to do it a bit differently um, but I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm really happy that I um, found found a way to customize um, the shape for for my body it, it help i will use that knowledge when customizing other patterns uh, by uh, by designers to to get the fit that i want um, the yarn is host yarn um, tights in the colorway spice as i said it's a um, wool and silk blend and you can see that it has this little speckles, which is the silk. Um, and I really like it. It's it's a really nice yarn to knit, and it softens really nicely when you um, when you wash it. And um, it I am fairly sensitive around the neck, especially wearing wearing wool against my skin. And I can feel this, but it's not. I can wear it. It's I'm, I'm quite happy to be wearing it like this with with bare skin underneath. So, so yeah, um, the sleeves could have been just a few centimeters longer because as I bend them, you know, they, they just creep up a little bit. And I did rein it, or I think I lengthened it. I lengthened it with a couple of tucks and thought, well, this is, I'll have to do it, but I could have lengthened it just a little bit more, but I wasn't gonna rip that back anymore because I didn't want any more tucks and um, I didn't want to go all the way back here because that would have just been too, too much. Um, but I have a tendency to knit my sleeves a bit short, so I, I will have to, I will have to remember to, to knit just a little bit longer than I actually think that they should be. Um, yeah. And what else? Let's see. Haha, <laughs> matchy matchy. Um, this is the Rochtin shawl, pattern by Anna Johanna, Finnish designer. Uh, I knit this at the end of last year and I have been wearing it a lot. I really, really like this. It's a triangle shawl. Um, and the yarn I've been using is a Regia sock yarn. Uh, color, it's in uh, color line is, is the name of, of the sort of of the yarn. Um, it has these gradient uh, colors and then these stripes um, are made out of this yarn. So the leftovers from this yarn go, go in here and in this um, lace uh, hem or edging as well. Um, now, obviously, I don't really wear this with this, cause, yeah. but I wear it with my winter coat 
and uh, it matches that really well and I really really like it. It's soft, it's warm, it's um, it's a beautiful pattern, it's really quick and easy to make. Well, the lace, the lace edging um, was was quite a long long chart, but I really enjoy lace knitting, so uh, I really liked making this one. Yeah, and uh, oh uh, yeah, I'll, um, I'm on Ravelry, and my Ravelry name is. My Tessa. You can find me there under the name of My Tessa. And you can also find me on Instagram as Stick uh, so, And I, I try to put all my, my um, finished objects on Ravelry, or all my objects, all my, my projects on Ravelry. Um, so if you want to read some more about this, well, you'll find it there. And I knitted socks. I'm always knitting socks. Now the first pair I'm going to show you, um, I haven't woven in the ends yet, so they're not quite finished, but I finished the knitting uh, quite a lot, some time ago. Um, these are my cat socks, my kitty cat socks. Um, I didn't have a pattern for this one. I made it up. And I tell you, it was quite a lot of work. <laughs> um, but I quite like how they turned out. And, and um, they have a, they're like, oh, I don't own sock blockers. So they have a striped, striped heel and just a heel flap. Um, yeah. And, and then a pico edge, which is sort of double folded over. I wanted a pair of, of, of socks with cats. We have a cat and I wanted matching socks. And um, I couldn't find a pattern that I really, that I liked or that was available on anywhere really with, with this type of, of small, small cats strewn all over it. So, so I just picked out some charts that I found um, on Pinterest and, you know, nothing ready-made, but just simple charts. So I, I picked those out and, and I, I just put them together and knit this in color work. And um, yeah, they turned out just a little bit long for my, I have really small feet. So these are just a little bit long for me. But then I couldn't stop, you know, here, cutting the cat in half, that would have been incredibly cruel. So I had to knit them, knit them all the way. So I'm thinking that maybe um, I'll, I'll um, keep these as guest socks in here in the house that people who come, who come visit and maybe need something to warm their feet can slip their feet into this, put their other socks on obviously um so yeah the yarn is not the best yarn for color work it's uh svarta foret mini socks i think it's called i bought it on a whim when i was in sweden and just had had, had this idea that i want to knit socks and i want them to be gray and white and so i just popped into the local yarn store and i found this yarn and i thought well that's, I'll, I'll try that uh, it was um, a bit splitty, so um, and also quite a bit of a halo, so which I find that obscures the pattern just a little bit. But looking at them here now, it looks pretty okay, actually. So, so yeah, these are my kitty cat socks. I do have two. And another pair of socks that I that look absolutely crap when just looking at them like this. Um, this is the, uh, the Vestigial Sock by Beata Jacek from Hedgehog Fibers. The pattern is available for free on Hedgehog, uh, from Hedgehog Fibers. 
Um, it's a it's a very simple basic sock pattern um, with a, a ribbing or a rib um, variation. Oh, let's see now. That's actually called mistake rib, uh, and but it but it's it it's quite. Um, Effective. It ha it has a nice. It gets. It's a nice effect. Um, and it's really stretchy, so that that's. I haven't blocked these uh, because I I when when they're on the foot they they just fit super nice and that's why they look a bit like this. Um, and um, I I did some mod modifications. This is a short row heel rather than I think also the heel flap in the pattern and I also shortened the, the cuff a little bit because I wanted shorter socks uh, but the yarn the yarn is lovely don't you think um, it's Johanna's yarn which is uh, she's a local dyer indie dyer in this uh, region um, and uh, this is her merino merino sock yarn in the colorway blue de Lin, um, which means uh, a maple leaf, uh, a maple tree uh, with blood red leaves. Not just when the, the leaves are about to fall, but actually all year or, or all around it, it has red leaves. And I think this colorway really re reflects that. And I think it's so beautiful because it just has all these little nuances and shades of, of uh, dark, um, mahogany burgundy uh, yeah I don't know but I think it's really really nice and I have quite a bit of, of yarn left of this so um, I, I'll probably do some some use it for some color work in, in some socks I think the rest of the yarn that will be really nice two vestigial socks So, what am I working on right now? As I said, I'm always knitting socks. And these are a real showstopper. <laughs> I think uh, it looks a bit like traffic lights. These are um, Totisesti Edullinen by Anna Mäkilä from her book Katse Kandapäin, Finnish, a Finnish book, only available in Finnish, um, the, the pattern is only available in Finnish for the moment, for the time being. And Totisesti Edullinen means uh, truly affordable, um, uh, as these can be knit from from scrap yarns, um, obviously, uh, and um, it's a really fun pattern. I'm really enjoying making these these stripes with just a little bit of color work in between. It's about four rows, uh, four or five, four rows of of um, stranded knitting in between the rows, and I think that just makes gives a really nice effect. And then it has a um, I think this is called a flegal heel, um, which means that it, it's uh, you, you make some increases over these rows here, but it's not a you don't you don't have a wedge, so you don't disturb the pattern at all. And then on this one um, section here, you're able to make all the all the sort of heel um, decreases. Yeah. Um, so um, I haven't made this heel before. We'll see how I like the fit once it's finished. But so far, it's looking good, and um, I'm quite. I quite like how this is constructed. Um, I'm making this on magic uh, magic loop with both socks at, it, at the same time. That is uh, undoubtedly a little bit fiddly. Uh, lots of yarn tangles and balls all over the place and and uh, but 
I, I like to make two at a time when there are, when you, perhaps you, may, you, you have some modifications, like I had a little, a few, fewer stitches than the pattern called for. And also when you're making these sort of random increases here, it's nicer if you can just do them all at once rather than having to think, oh, how did I do them on, on the first one? So, so yeah, even though it's a bit fiddly, fiddly I, I like making them both at the same time. The yarn, the yarn, um, all of these uh, colorful stripes here, including the gray, uh, were yarns that I got in my advent swap uh, before Christmas, before last year. Um, I got, and all of these yarns I think are from the from uh, Limo Design in Sweden, because I got, I got these yarns from a Swedish lady. Um, and they were about um, eight, nine gram uh, little balls or skeins. And um, that's just enough to make three sets of stripes um, in these socks. So, so that's really great. I, they, it was just enough. The, the gray, I did run out of the gray, uh, I think, on this stripe up here. So I had to, to substitute it actually for, for this gray that I, but that works. It, it's not. Um, works okay. Um, there was also a bit of, um, there, there was an incident involving a cat um, when while working on this yarn and some balls being chewed off right through the middle, which made me a bit nervous about how the yarn was actually gonna, um, if I was gonna make the few last rounds of, of, of the stripes, but I made it despite said cat having done its thing. So, and these uh, are my first first um, socks for the 2020 socks box of socks challenge. Uh, there are several different box of socks uh, challenges going on around around Instagram and um, podcasts and, and stuff. I'm participating in Nonnu um, Neuloyas Sukkalatikko. Nannu is, is a local uh, local um, knitter. She lives here in Vasa as well, and um, she had she's she hosts one of these challenges. So this is gonna be uh, my first pair for that one. Um, and um, I knit socks out of uh, um, out of inspiration. Just I don't make plans. I'm gonna knit these socks, or I'm gonna make those. I just knit whatever feels right at the moment. So when these are finished, I don't know what I'll knit next, but I'll, I'll sure knit. Um, I'll, I will surely knit 12 pairs, I think, during the year. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say um, the stripes. Um, the stripes were the Limo Design yarn, but this this yarn, uh, that's a, an ancient yarn that I, that from my stash, I actually found found the sort of it's called Pirta Villanalle, and this is surely more than twenty years old. I've had it in my stash forever. Um, it's a hundred percent wool, um, superwash wool, um, but it's it's a bit um, uh, thicker uh, than these these other the other yarns. And I've knitted on 225 needles, so it's really, really, this section here is really, really sturdy. Um, so I'm thinking that probably will hold up quite well. It's not a very nice yarn to knit socks with, not at this small gauge anyway. It's, um, it splits easily um, and yeah, but it works. It works in, in for these stripes and well, I just, it was what I had and I wanted to use it. So, so I think it will soften in the wash because I've, I've made something in the past from it a very long time ago and they looked quite nice even after washing it and wearing for quite some time. So yeah. Um, I do love color work. Um, 
well that seems to be a trend at the moment in general and so I've been working on a mitten this is the um, silver mitten and now I have no idea whatsoever who the designer is but I will put it here somewhere this is also a a D stash project really I have a lot of yarn small quantities of yarn from way back that I try to find find ways to to do something with and this is this is using some of that yarn this is um the white the white is novita florica and florica has been long out of production in um at novita um it's a hundred percent wool it's a two ply very loosely spun very sort of lofty airy yarn a uh, really good quality yarn actually um but but they don't have it anymore um, and i remember buying it many many moons ago um and i did have some some a few colors left of it in my stash and i figured well it, it would make 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 a nice warm mitten and it really it works quite well in this one i think the the contrast color or yarn is uh, drops um, alpaca silk I think um, yeah oh I didn't bring bring the band uh, the, the yarn band to see what it's actually called but yeah I've made a sweater out of it and so I had some leftovers of that. Now this is a quite a fairly low con contrast um, mitten, but I think it still works. This is um, this doesn't have a thumb yet, and I do have the other one um, going. Yeah, so it's a really nice and and. The, warm and and squishy little mitten and uh, it has some latvian braids and it has um uh, in here <laughs> is like a row of of um, yarn over um, gaps <laughs> where you can where you can put a cord and so you can actually pull this a little tighter around the around the cuff or the wrist so yeah these are a bit slow going um the chart uh, because the, the it's it's a bit low low contrast it, it requires a lot of concentration and um and the chart is, is also sort of quite it, it's a full chart <laughs> pretty much so so it, it requires concentration so I don't work on these um, while watching other post podcasts, for instance, because then I will do everything wrong. But they will be, uh, will be really nice. Oof, the color. <laughs> it just pops. This is the ra uh, <laughs> the raspberry sweater. I call it the raspberry sweater uh, because this is a raspberry color. I don't know if, if the color is uh, is a bit more red on on my screen at least, but it's it's a um, halon red color, um, raspberry colored. Um, but the, but the name of the pattern is sea blush, and it's by Andrea Ra um, Rangel or Rangel Rangel. Um, and it's top down basic round yoke uh, sweater with with a, a bit of a, a patterning an easy um, stitch pattern up here now just a second while i put this on
this is what it looks like. Um, I haven't quite decided how far, how long I'm gonna make it. There are two versions of it in the pattern, a, a cropped one, a real cropped one or a standard length one. I, I'm probably gonna make this the standard length, but I haven't quite decided how long that is um, for me. And then there are just uh, ordinary plain stockinette sleeves and a bit of ribbing at the end. A really nice pattern. Um, this is made using two yarns, two strands held together, uh, holst, super soft in the colorway poppy and holst titicaca, which is a, a lace weight alpaca yarn in the colorway camellia. And these are really, really nice. I um, mean, this this lay, this uh, um, alpaca is just so squishy and soft, and has really beautiful heathering in the color. Uh, that does not perhaps show as well in the sweater in itself, at least not in pictures. It, I think, it shows better in real life, actually. Um, I'm knitting it on, fa on a fairly small needles, um, uh, three three millimeter needles, and so the yarn, so the fa the fabric is quite sturdy. Um, it's going to be really warm, but I am counting on it to soften and and sort of relax quite a lot in in the the wash or in, when blocking. So I'm I'm looking forward to this being a really soft, uh, close fitting, really nice and flattering sweater. Yeah. And I, I like color. I, I'm not a beige and black and gray person. Um, even though I, I if I look, when looking at, at other people's projects, I think, oh, that looks so stylish and that looks so nice. But wearing those colors myself, it just completely washes me out. So, Many of my projects are are quite colorful because I just like that. Yeah, this is a bit slow going also because the, the gauge is so small, but it's nice. It's an enjoyable knit. I um, I do a few rounds whenever and it's a good old, a good TV knit because right now there's just plain stockinette. So yeah, um, what are my plans for 2020. Um, well, apart from knitting socks for the box of socks, um, I want to knit sweaters. I have a history <laughs> of not really being able to finish my sweaters. I've had sweater projects lying in my UFO pile for years and years and not ever being finished. They may be knit. Actually, the whole piece may be knit, but the finishing, I can't get around to the finishing, the weaving in ends or possibly seaming stuff together or button bands or stuff like that. So, and I mean, that's really tragic, isn't it? Um, knitting a whole piece and not just getting around to finishing it. But as time goes, you fall out of love with that pattern and with, with the project. And then you pick it up and you think, why on earth did I ever knit this? What what did I see in this design or in this this yarn or whatever? So that I have a bad history of doing that. And um, this yarn, this is Manos del Uruguay. But, but the yarn, it's, it's a gorgeous red, I like red, <laughs> um, a bit darker than when it what it looks like on, on the screen now. And it's also more, more um, heathered or it has darker, darker uh, blotches here and there. 
um, it knits up really nicely, believe me, because I have tried, I have knit two whole sweaters out of this yarn. First, it was short lucky, and then it was um, escarpment, and now it's this. And I really want to try and make a cardigan out of this this year that I will actually finish and wear. So I'm thinking about something by Isabel Kramer. She has lots of nice, nice patterns, lots of nice cardigans as well. Um, so th <laughs> this is the year when this beautiful yarn is finally going to come into proper use and not just lie at the bottom of a box feeling sorry for itself. Yeah. Other than that, um, I just plan to enjoy knitting. I'm, I'm not gonna... I haven't made any make nines or any bingo sheets or anything like that. I, I, I want this to be very, uh, very free, very unambitious, uh, just do what makes you feel good, basically. Um, I am going to attend the Neulovasa event, a big event held right here in our city on the 1st of February. Really looking forward to that. There'll be lots of yarn for sale and uh, hopefully lots of knitters meeting and spending the day to together. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I also have a knit group that I um, regularly attend. Uh, which I'm um, looking forward to that starting up again next week, I think. So, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, excited for the new uh, decade and the new, uh, the new knitting year and the new gardening year when I don't knit um, or when, when the season allows it. I love to garden. I love to spend time outdoors doing digging um, and planting and harvesting my own uh, food and flowers and plants. So this time of year is a time of expectation and um, just uh, rejoicing over the light finally returning. So so let's just wrap it up there in, in the spirit of anticipation and joy that we we are knitters and we can create and we have have a great year ahead of us so until next time bye bye